everybody and welcome back to Jeff Quinton TV. I am your host, Jeff Quinton, the most passionate real estate show here on the internet. Today is a very, very important topic. Okay, this is very important. So here's what we've got. I wrote down here, as you can see at the top, it says negative cash flow versus future appreciation. I'm not so sure you can actually see all these numbers. I'm gonna go through this very quickly. You can rewind it. We're gonna have it on the blog here because this is a very, very important. I have this conversation with sellers every day. Look, what do I do? How much future appreciation am I gonna get? Where am I within this? Because so many people paid such a high number, the markets come down, do I wait and hold and continue to carry negative cash flow or what do I do? Take a look at this uh, scenario right now. Okay, here we go. Let's just say that you paid for a property 400,000. 400,000 between the years of 2005, 2007. You uh, basically put 20% down or so and you paid it down, you owe 300,000 today. Your monthly payment, principal interest, taxes, condo fee, whatever you got going on is roughly around $2,300 a month times 12, that's $28,000 for the year. Okay, now you rent the property. Someone rents the whole deal, you get 10, 12, whatever weeks out of it. Your, your, uh, your gross rents are going to probably be somewhere around $18,000 or so on this type of property. Your net after you pay out your, uh, um, your clean fees, all expenses for the year, the whole thing, maintenance, you're going to net around $13,000. Okay, so you've got $28,000 a year in expenses. You're netting $13,000 after everything. Negative cash flow of $15,000 a year. Okay, we're clear on that. We have $15,000 a year. We've got to write a check to throw at this asset every year to maintain it. All right, good. Okay, so today the markets come down. What's the home worth? You paid $400. Unfortunately, today it may be worth $230. If you were to sell it today for $230, commission, real estate transfer tax, deed preparation, the net to you takes 7% off the top you're going to end up netting you know, roughly $215,000. Okay? Now, again, you owe three hundred. dollars Right here, you're upside down $85,000. Upside down $85,000. Okay, so what do I do? So I'm upside $85,000. Understanding I'm $85,000 upside down and I'm throwing $15,000 a year away to maintain this asset so that hopefully one day I can get back out of it. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to wait five years. Let's say I wait five years and say, you know what? I'm going to ride this thing out. Market's getting better. Whatever's going on, let's see where it goes. All right, great. So I'm going to throw $15,000 at it a year, five years at $75,000. let us put that on the side. We understand that. For me to break even and get back out of the property, meaning I want to get all my cash back, I've got to, again, remember, you paid $400,000 for it. I've got to sell this now or the market has to go up to 430. Again, minus that 7% nets you the 400, what you paid for it, now you're out. So that means a difference between what you would sell it for today at 230, what you would net today at 215, versus where the market needs to go to 430. The market needs to appreciate by 50%, roughly 15%, excuse me, 50%, okay? 50% appreciation. So keep in mind, for a five-year hold, if you, if you waited five years, we got to make sure the market goes up 50%. Well, is that going to happen? Well, the market would need to go up 10% every year for five years. Is that realistic? It's not. Okay. Even in a good market, if it started today, if it started today in a normal market and the market went from here and started going up, let's just call it 5% a year All right, for the next five years. So if, you're, you know, if your value today is at 230 5% a year, that would only bring you $60,000 more. That brings you to a value of two hundred ninety. dollars Remember, you've got to sell for four thirty dollars to get out even. You're still upside down. Meanwhile, out of those five years, you've thrown your $75,000 over there. So keep in mind, we have a negative cash flow every single year. So this is what would happen. You would put $75,000 out of your right pocket to throw at the asset in hopes that it would only get up $60,000 to 290 over the next five years if the market appreciated at 5% a year for the next five years. Okay, let's just say the market went up 5% a year for the next 10 years. Keep in mind, you have, then you're going to have to put out $15,000 a year, negative cash flow, the next 10 years. So now you're going to throw $150,000 out of your, you know, say your right pocket in hopes at that point that the market would only go up, okay, by 120,000. So you're still gonna be negative here all the way around, guys. So for the market to go up all the way to 430,000 when the property's worth 230 today, 50%, the question is, 
how long is that going to take to get the market to come back? Or how much more time am I willing to throw good money at this asset year after year? If you're throwing good money at an asset, in my opinion is, if you're going to throw $15,000 at an asset today, you would want it to appreciate in proportion to that so that you're breaking even. So this is a hard thing that people look at. What do I do? Well, your options are one, bring the money to the table, sell now. Two, sell it as a short sale, get the lender to accept less, get full debt forgiveness. And that's a whole other conversation if you guys are going to consider that. But I want you to look at this if you're in this situation and say, you know, how long can I go? What do I want to do? Am I a long-term hold or am I going to sell right now and get out of the property and then look at those options, okay? Any questions, concerns, call me, uh, comment on here, whatever it may be. Forward this to a friend if you know somebody that's uh, having this situation. And uh, I look forward to our conversation being the best of your day. Hope you're doing great.